Hello and welcome to Mining Network. We're joined today by Matthew James, the CEO of Euro Manganese, and we're at the mining investment event of the North here in Quebec City, Canada. Matt, good to see you. Nice to be here, thank you. Good. Um, just to kick things off very, very briefly, tell us a little bit about the company in terms of where's the project, where are you listed, your market cap, ticker. So Euro Manganese has a project in the Czech Republic, uh, but we're listed on both the Australian Stock Exchange and the Toronto Stock Exchange and our ticker is ENN on both. Okay, and before we get into the weeds of the project and, and what's happening at the moment, mm. I'd just like to always start with a little bit of the management team background, so sure. if you don't mind. I joined the company in December, but my background is I'm a material scientist by degree. We then went to work for Deutsche Bank for three years in London, mm -hmm. uh, and then after that McKinsey in London for four years. Then went out to Australia, got involved in natural resources and worked with Linus Corporation, the rare earth company. Yep. Was there for nine years um, through, through the development of that, that company. Uh, came back to the UK about seven years ago, ran my own consultancy in strategy and growth and then joined yeah, the Euromanganese nine months ago. So this is a bit different than your typical mining projects, it's tailings recycling. Correct. So before we go into that aspect of it, What's the history in terms of there must have been a mine there before to obviously produce the tailings? Can you tell us about the history of the project? Sure. So between 1950 and 1970, in the sort of Soviet Czechoslovakian era, they were mining pyrite to produce sulfuric acid. Um, it just happens to be a lot of manganese in the tailings. And so there's 27 million tons of tailings now just sitting there, uh, already ground, fine, and we just have to free dig for our project. That was something I was going to talk to you about, actually. It must be so much easier just to, instead of having to re-crush. Is there any re-crushing going on there? No or is it literally just straight just, through just, to the plant? Just uh, dig it up, put it into a slurry and straight okay. through to the plant. Yeah. Okay. Well, I assume that will help with your overall costs, in, in, in but we'll, we'll see more of that in the PFS, or throw the feasibility study that comes out in there. In July. In July. Yes, yeah. What can you tell us about the actual grade and, and the actual deposit itself? Obviously, it sounds like it's a pretty, pretty large deposit, but in terms of so you're talking to even say a geo or someone new, completely new to the asset. Yeah. How would you best describe it? So moment? it's a manganese carbonate uh, mineral, and mm -hmm. that's important because it's easier to process. It's grading about eight percent in the deposit, but we upgrade that straight away with manganese separation up to uh, fifteen percent. Okay. Um, so then, and then that goes through through the plant. Twenty-seven million tons. So it's a lifetime of 25 years producing 50,000 tonnes of high purity manganese in a metal equivalent form. Let's go on to manganese actually, uh, high purity sulphate, because there are two markets for manganese, obviously one mainly for steel production. Yeah. Now we're seeing this real emergence of high purity sulphate for batteries. Um, those familiar with the channel will, will know manganese or, or should, should see some of the stuff we do with CPM Group and Andrew Zemic, yes, but yeah. for those less familiar, what can you tell the audience about this market because it's, it's quite exciting, right? So it's a brand new market for high purity manganese. The electric vehicles, every cathode, uh, there's an NMC cathode, the M is manganese, um, and you know, there just isn't enough high purity capacity out there for the forecast demand. So the demand from CPM Group is growing to 950,000 tonnes globally by 2030. Um, and it looks like there's going to be, if you take all the projects that we know about, plus add a, another 300,000 tonnes of production from China, which is where it's coming from today, we're still at a 450,000 tonne deficit. Again, on top of that, there are manganese-rich chemistries coming to the fore because removing cobalt lowers the cost of the cathode. Yeah. So that's an exciting new growth area as well. Looking forward at your projects at the moment, obviously being based in Europe, um, it's not, it, it can be difficult to permit a mine in Europe, but it's obviously not impossible. There's especially places like Scandinavia and other places in Eastern Europe. How are you going with the permitting process at the moment? How, how far along are you and, and what's the timeline looking like for that? Yeah, so the Czech Republic's a very good mining uh, environment. Uh, they do mining there at the moment and a very clear permitting process. So we did our preliminary EIA in 2020 that came through with no problems. So we're, we're submitting our final environmental impact assessment in September and that will be about a six month process, fairly clearly defined process. 
Once we get that, then we can apply for our land planning and construction permit. We'll be about another six months. So we're expecting by September next year is when we'll be ready with our construction permit. You're at the helm since, was it? December. December, yeah. okay. And since you've been there, what's been the main focus for you as the new CEO over the last few months and I guess even looking forward a little bit further? What's, what's really the key aims at the moment that you need to achieve? Well, I think um, obviously getting to know the local community has been very important. We have a very supportive local community. Because this is a tailings project, it's actually a remediation project just as much as a, a high purity manganese project. So that's great and I've been doing a lot of work there. The demonstration plant has been the main focus for the last few months. That's now been built and shipped uh, on its way to site where we've prepared two buildings ready for the installation of that. So that will be on site towards the end of this month. We then need to put that together. Uh, it's all been cold commissioned already. Yeah, where it was built, but uh, uh, and then and then the feasibility study has been a big focus. We've now finalised all the costs. Uh, we've finalised uh, the CPM. have finalised their price forecasts. So we're just putting all that all together, and we'll be announcing that in the next few weeks, early July. Just to finish things off as well. I mean, in terms of looking at the corporate structure of the company at the moment, um, obviously it's no surprise that eventually you will need to go on and look to to actually potentially raise some financing to build this mine. Yeah. Um, what's the share structure at the moment? What major backers do you have in the company? And I guess, I guess even looking a bit further if we can, are you, are you hoping to get some offtake partners down the line which might be able to help solve with the, shore up some of the debt? Sure. So, um, you know, we have 400, just over 400 million shares on issue. Um, so our market cap is, is at the moment about 100 million. We have 30, over $30 million in the bank, mm -hmm. um, which is a great place to be given the runway that we have. Um, in terms of offtake contracts, you know, we are progressing those and we anticipate to be able to announce specific offtake agreements by the end of this year. And some of those are talking about the potential to participate in the project finance. In terms of uh, significant shareholders, the European Bank of Reconstruction and Development yep. uh, is, a, is a, one of our largest shareholders. Mm -hmm. uh, they recently put $8.5 million into the company. Uh, so having that EU support is great. And they also do debt uh, as well as the EIB. Yeah. Um, they're very well closely connected to the EIB. So from a debt perspective, um, institutional investment from Europe, you know, I think is a strong possibility. And together with your typical uh, commercial banks alongside that. Um, we're just about to appoint a financial advisor for the project financing, mm -hmm. uh, which we'll be announcing in the next few weeks as well. Okay, and all going well, just finish things off. So feasibility study comes out, would you say around September time? No, feasibility study early July. Ah, then the... Permitting submission in September. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Off-take contracts by the end of the year. Good. Our life cycle assessment has just been completed as well. And that shows that we have approximately half the CO2 footprint of the incumbent processes, which is very important for the EV industry. We'll be publishing that probably in July as well, just after the feasibility study. Uh, and then the demonstration plant is the other key deliverable for the back half of this year. So commissioning that in September. And that will produce tons of samples to go to customers for qualification. Okay, so it sounds like you've got a pretty exciting year ahead. I think there are some very strong catalysts for the stock to re-rate, yep. um, which would be obviously very helpful when we move into the project financing stage. All right, well, I'll keep up to date, but it, it does sound very exciting. Yeah. Matt. Yeah. Matt, thank you for joining us. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Cheers.